my booktube. I'm here today with a wrap up, finally. <laughs> I feel like it's been a while since I've done one of those. Um, and this is going to be a wrap up of all the fiction I've read since I've last updated. There's 12 books, so let's get this intro over with and get into the books. Okay, so the first book I'm going to talk about, they're not in any particular order. Um, yeah, I'm just looking that over. Uh, most of them were read in September. Um, but let's just dive into it. Uh, so I read A Lesson Before Dying by Ernest J. Gaines, and this is about a uh, black man in the southern United States, I think in the like 1950s, who's been tasked with um, going and giving a lesson, I guess is the best way to describe it, to this man who's been condemned for a murder that he likely didn't commit. Um, and it's about the, a lot of it is about the, not just the responsibilities of uh, of black men in, in the, especially in the southern culture, um, but a lot about like their their feelings because of those responsibilities placed upon them, um, especially as a as a educated um, uh, black man. Um, yeah, it was very interesting. Um, I felt it was it's definitely a lot less about the plot and more about the ideas presented. Um, and I love books like that, so I'm just <laughs> I just I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, and, uh, I don't know what else I can say about it, um, because it's just, <laughs> just so good. Some of the, the ideas that I, you know, I've never really thought about myself before, um, being as I'm not a black man in the South. Um, yeah, um, you know, a lot of, um, you know, personal freedom versus, you know, familial responsibilities and stuff like that, too, of, of do I sacrifice who I am um, to help my family? Um, or do I go and take this gift that they've given me and abandon them and go and be my own person? Um, that was a lot, that was a major theme that played throughout. There were some other themes too, but that's the one that really stuck out to me. Um, I also read Deaf Republic by Ilya Kaminsky. This is a series of poems about a, um, village that's, um, there's a war going on and a, a little boy is killed and they all, I believe they're pretending to be deaf, um, and they are not talking to the enemy but they, they consign to each other. Um, it was, it was an interesting idea. I really, really liked the idea. The execution is what I had the problem with. It felt very underdeveloped. It felt like I was reading, like, not even a finished draft. I felt like there could have been so much more to it, that there were some poems that were not really necessary to me. There were, like, this romance stuff going on, and I was just like, can we get to the story, please? Like, if you're gonna be have a book that short, like, you have to edit it, and maybe you could have put a poem in that kind of developed your idea further. Um, yeah, I think it was just really left unsatisfied in the end by that. I also read King's Dragon by Kate Elliott. This is the first book in the Crown of Stars series. It was just a random pick. Um, it looked like a great 90s fantasy and that's the niche that I really love when it comes to fantasy. Um, and it's, yeah, I, it has, it's just, I like the tropes in 90s fantasy. Um, I like the, the storylines, um, yeah, um, so we follow Liath, who is, her mother has died before the book begins and she's traveling with her father and her father eventually passes too and like horrible things happen to her, um, but she's been educated in, um, not so legal fashions in regards to magic. Um, and we also follow Elaine, who is going supposed to go into the church, um, but he decides, after his village and the church have been attacked, to go um, join a count's army. He doesn't really decide, it kind of just sort of happens, but he does make the choice to, you know, like, not stay and go off and do something. And what I really enjoyed about these is their, its take on religion. 
Um, and she mentions in the book that she's done a lot of research, she had a lot of people talking to her about it, and it's kind of like a form of Christianity, like early medieval Christianity, but she puts her own spin on it. And there's a lot, of, lot to do with um, gender as well, as in like, you know, in these normal medieval fantasy settings, women are oppressed and, you know, but in this one, like, women aren't, they're almost completely equal to men. Um, there are some gender things going on, but mostly like, you can have a queen or king and they'll be equally powerful, you know, um, queens, or not queens, women, <laughs> um, can, you know, be, be in charge of the land or, you know, the church where they have high positions of power and stuff like that. So it was really cool um, to see that kind of spin on it. So instead of just like a god, they have a god and goddess. So the lord and a lady, uh, which was, I thought was interesting, but it does have a lot of uh, Christian influence, like early medieval Christian influence on it too, because we get a lot of um, perspectives from the church as well. It's 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 super fascinating world that she managed to create. Um, I really enjoyed it and I am currently reading the second book in the series. Um, okay, the next one is Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This is a reread for me. I used to reread this every year since I read it in grade 10, um, which would be two thousand and one. Yeah, can you forget how old I am now? <laughs> um, yeah, and then I just stopped doing it a few years ago for some reason, um, just because I, you know, started reading a whole bunch of other new, new books. Um, so I decided again this year that I was finally going to reread it again. And I forgot a lot, <laughs> um, despite how many times I reread it. Um, and there's always the scenes I dread when, um, certain things happen. I don't want to spoil people. I assume you've read it because it's a classic, but you know, there's lots of younger people on here than me who probably haven't read it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a story about, on its surface, about a group of boys who get um, crash landed on an island with no adults, and I think they're all about 13 or younger. Um, and just the chaos that ensues, and not in a fun way. Um, it's all about leadership and politics and gender and a whole bunch of cool stuff and people always read it on the surface just like it's always about boys will be boys and it's about so much more than that just like just give it a read um okay then i read uh, mouth human must die by lee d thompson and uh, i've been making an effort to read more um authors from new brunswick now that i'm here um and this was one of the books i found in the library really short it was only 35 pages i think I think, <laughs> I think it's about a man who believes this um, slow loris at the zoo can talk to him and is passing on a manifesto of sorts to him. And I, I, I think I, I, I want to buy a copy of this just so I can reread it and go back because the ending was just like... Is the world ending? Is he eating this person? Like I was so confused about what was going on, but it was enjoyable. Um, yeah, um, I don't know what I can say. It's 35 pages long and it's weird. And I, I suggest if you can find a copy of it, maybe read it. Um, the next book um, is Othello by Shakespeare, and I've read all of Shakespeare before. I just, I've taken multiple courses. I've taught Shakespeare, so like. I just decided to reread it as an nod to Shake Timber, even though no one, Othello wasn't on any of the, uh, the big reading list there. This is an alcohol, by the way. This is Golden Ale, or Dark Ginger Ale, I think it's also called. Um, <laughs> it looks like a giant glass of whiskey, though, doesn't it? Um, anyways, and I remember why <laughs> I didn't really like Othello, because it's very much Iago saying he's gonna do something, then lying about it and then doing something and it was just like this just there's where is the creativity Shakespeare what happened in Othello I don't know what happened in Othello it's just it's just it's not there it wasn't there for me um yeah Othello is one of my least favorite Shakespeare plays um because of that I was just I was frustrated the whole time going like why why do we need Iago talking this much when he could just do things <sighs> yeah I, that's all I have to say about Othello I don't know how to tell you what it's about. Let's skip on to the next one. Ring Shout by P. Jelly Clark. This was good. I just, it's a blend of 
horror and fantasy and historical fiction and just like the, th the part that really stood out to me was the fantasy stuff and I can't tell you because it happens near the end of the book but that that scene I just I was just so enamored with it I was just like wide-eyed joy just reading those sections and I was just like this is this is perfect this is this is what I wanted um and now I got to read everything else that he's written <laughs> once I can get my hands on it um so this is about a group of women warriors in um 1920s 1930s I don't have the exact date um southern states and they hunt Ku Kluxes which are like demons that take over people from the KKK and like literally like transform them um into like these white bone demons and so they hunt them down um and like uncover this massive plot that's gonna happen so like you get that horror of like these demon things um and the horror of the KKK and then like the historical setting of like being in like a jazz bar in like the 1920s and 1930s and like this fantasy I just just drop what you're reading and go and read this book it is it is amazing okay um a not so amazing book The Employees by Olga Raven again I felt like this was an interesting concept but again I guess I think what also happened here is that my expectations were wrong not that they weren't met but they were completely wrong um so I read the subtitle and I just assumed certain things about this book it was called The Employees uh 22nd century workplace of the no novel of the workplace or something like that and I thought okay cool like maybe she's gonna go into like the whole anti-work you know work reform um kind of idea of um you know being in a workplace and quiet quitting that kind of, the whole kind of idea I don't know if you're aware of the anti-work movement um but yeah I'm really highly interested <laughs> in that um and you know it was expecting something like that in this book and it's not um so this book is about some workers on a spaceship who encounter these creatures and it's kind of like their um it's like in reality shows this, I guess the best way to explain it in reality shows where it's like big brother or something and they can go into the private room and like talk it's like that um they're just like discussing their interactions with these really weird alien creatures that affect them in some way um so I think my expectations of it maybe colored it for me a bit and I didn't really enjoy it um as much as maybe if I'd known what the book was about um before <laughs> assuming what it was about um so yeah don't let my my review here discourage you from reading it um just because it wasn't what I wanted it to be uh, then I read The Literary Conference by Cesar Era and another book I'm in love with. Um, so this, uh, I didn't realize it was science fiction. <laughs> so we follow this mad scientist um, who wants to clone, um, oh what's his name? He wrote The Death of Artemio Cruz and I'm horrible with names but I can remember Artemio Cruz and the name of that book but it's he wants to clone this guy so that he can have him take over the world with a bunch of clones of him as soldiers <laughs> oh man um so <laughs> he he tries he tries and uh, disastrous results um really quite funny and um, enjoyable book um i really did i really did enjoy that um book and the idea <laughs> and what happens but i can't tell you what happens um but it's definitely not what you're expecting <laughs> um yeah uh, then I read The Midwitch Cuckoos by John Wyndham because I wanted to watch the TV show. Um, and I did watch the TV show. And so, okay. The Midwitch Cuckoos, and I find this a lot with some earlier science fiction, like with H.G. Wells, too, that a lot of it is about not the action, but like people talking about the action. And I really found that with The Midwitch Cuckoos is that um, you'd have these big events happening, these big things happening, and it was just people sitting around talking about it which was interesting in its own way um but like, I feel like if this book was written today it would have been both the action scene and then the people discussing it 
Um, so he was able to present a lot of like really interesting ideas. I should probably tell you what the Midwitch Cuckoos is about instead of assuming you know what it's about. Um, so the Midwitch Cuckoos is about this small English village um, gets kind of taken over by something. Uh, what that exactly is we don't know. Um, and so all the women wake up, the whole village falls asleep and all the women wake up and discover that they're pregnant. Um, whether they had, you know, a partner with which to get pregnant with or not, um, that they woke up and then they all gave birth around the same time and all the children were pretty much identical. Um, and then things start to get really creepy. Um, yeah, um, it, he brought up some interesting ideas. He touched on interesting ideas about um, female gender roles and, um, you know, uh, control over your your fertility and stuff like that and how scary that would be you know if you were like a 16 year old virgin waking up suddenly and you're pregnant you know like <laughs> that's that's terrifying right um and, and then in that time period and also trying to explain that to people right like you know it's um yeah um so there's some interesting ideas that the show um pits it in a more modern setting and definitely does more with that um i'd say I'd say you could probably skip the book and watch and watch the watch the TV show. To be honest, it's interesting in the ideas that they talk about, um, but yeah, just not not really. It's okay, but it wasn't good. Great, if that makes sense. Um, I also read with my dog eyes by Hilda Hilst, 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 and that is about a man. I believe it has been stated that he has schizophrenia. It's not stated in the text, but it's kind of known. Um, he was a, a professor and then just his descent into schizophrenia um, and his brain just working against him. Um, it was a very quick read. A lot of weird stuff happens um, and it is like you're in in his brain. You're not an observer outside witnessing this like you're in his brain and like weird stuff is happening. It's all disjointed. Um, I thought it was interesting. Um, I, I probably will have to reread it. I did read it all in one sitting again. I think, I think that effect, um, the, that affected the way that I viewed the book after I was finished it, the, the speed at which I was reading it. I wish I had taken my time with a few more of these books instead of just like trying to finish as much as I could as fast as I could. I think if I spent more time with this book I would have appreciated it more. Um, I think it is a good book after like speed reading it um, but I would like to get more in depth and get my hands into it and look more at, at it. Um, it's particularly interesting because right now I'm working um, with people with uh, schizophrenia um, so I got to see you know real life <laughs> and um, some of the uh, the fictionalized version of this. I believe her father had schizophrenia as well so it's like I can't say semi-autobiographical because she didn't have the experience herself but she had like a third person kind of experience with it. That makes sense. Okay the last book I finished yeah Supernatural Carved in Flesh uh, by Tim Wagner. I just have a really soft spot for media tie-in novels. You know that with like Stargate Atlantis and Stargate books. I just it doesn't even matter if they're well written or not. Like I just love them. Um, and this was the same thing. I just <laughs> loved it. He, you know there were a few uh, questionings here. I was like oh, I don't know if the character would really do that or not. But again he's he's only writing this. This takes place in season seven. I'm like I've watched the show like 20 times all 15 seasons. Like a ridiculous amount of times. So I'm like I feel like I've had more experience with the characters than he has so I guess I can kind of forgive it when he doesn't get the characters 100% but yeah so this one is kind of like a, a Frankenstein type story. Um, it starts off with this um, dog that's kind of patchworked from a bunch of different dogs gets like let loose on this town and they are it just like it sucks the life out of people um, and they have to go and investigate that. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. It was decent. I could, um, you know, it was a little drawn out because it was a novel, but I could see it, um, if it was tightened up a bit being a, an actual episode, um, as well. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I have to say about it. It's 
supernatural. Uh, it could be, it's like reading fan fiction, but like canonized approved fan fiction. Like how, how can you get better than that? <laughs> Let me know. Um, so um, what was the last book you last finished? And thank you for watching.